go for questing bees, and we can go for the double strike here. Let's see what they do. They might not block. This could just be a cheeky win. <laughs> double strike. <laughs> that brings me so much joy. So much joy. So yeah, I think I've accidentally made one of the strongest decks I've ever seen in my life, so let's check it out. So yeah, this is the new Mole God from Ravnica 4, or Karl of Mana, whichever one you want to say. 4 mana 8-4 is kind of ludicrous, it's very strong, whenever it becomes blocked, untap each creature you control, and after this phase there's an additional combat phase. One thing I have noted in testing is that Anzrag has to survive... Pretty sure he has to survive the um, the block for this trigger to go off. Otherwise, there's nothing to kind of resolve. Um, so if someone blocks it with a 4x and kills Anzrag, it won't trigger. So just be careful. What we want to abuse in this deck is just he's incredibly high power. So we want to use things we don't normally use. Team of Battle Rage. This is a really cool card that they've put in recently. It gives it double strike. And if you've got power 4 greater, it gets trample as well. So this is basically a win con in itself. This plus this is 16 damage. Just, just that. Lightning Spear is a very cheap way to give trample. Three mana in total. And you can sacrifice this to Lightning Bolt something. It can be pretty nice. Critical Hit gives something double strike. I really like that. And then we've got Xenoghost, which is pretty cool. Um, make sure to give your guy trample as much as possible. So Kenner Charioteer is in here for that very reason. There's not too many cards that do this this cheap. And then on the upper end, we want to get to Silly Billy status. We've got Return of the World Speaker, which lets you draw eight cards. And Wish Cards Expertise lets you draw eight cards and then play something as long as you have hands rag out. And something else that you shouldn't miss um, is Hunter's Insight. Whenever a creature deals damage, you can use this on your creature to draw how many cards. Obviously, with the commander, draw eight. This is very high rate. Eight power for four is really awesome. So let's check out the video, see how well I do with this ludicrous card. And you know what? I still think it's kind of balanced because it doesn't have any ward or protection, so it does die to literally every removal spell under the sun. It's got four toughness, so it doesn't have to lightning bolt. That's the best thing that it's got going for it. And yeah, we, we want it. We want it to attack in, we want it to get blocked, and we'll see what goes on. Cool. I think we take this hand because the Brotherhood's end is here, and this is going to take out the majority of their creatures. You know, the rest of the hand's a bit iffy, though, but yeah, this is going to hopefully keep us in. Rhythm of the Wild's pretty epic as well with Anthrag, I have to say. Impact Tremors, oh dear. That is very powerful. That is very, very powerful in this deck. So if we get a land, we can smack them with Andrag next turn. Pretty, pretty cool. We've got a lot of other things we can do as well. And then Pakal, yeah. I mean, we probably just Brotherhood's end here, don't we? To be honest. She, she's an, she's an, she's an army in a can. So. Okay, my boys, try and be back in a sec. Okay, sorry about that, my boy was crying, but he seems to be okay now. Um, Kapar... I think we just go for Anthrag here. I mean, they could trade. They choose not to. So they could just have removal. Right, haste. So they're going to get a 1-1. One, one. And then tapped. 16. Um, can we win? That would double the power. 1-2. Let's go for questing bees. And we can go for the double strike here. Let's we'll see what they do. They might not block. This could just be a cheeky win. <laughs> Double strike. <laughs> that brings me so much joy. So much joy. Okay, cool. We're just straight up facing the higher tier decks all of a sudden. It's kind of weird. I've been playing for a few hours now and it was all going fine. Suddenly, out of nowhere, I'm facing Prismatic Bridge, Goshen Tai, which is high, high Q. Um... Yeah, so there is that. 
We'll see. I mean, we do have the answer with Storm's Wrath, so we, we can take care of their, sh well, their creature-based shrines, but it's going to be kind of annoying for the other stuff. I guess we can try and go for Ansrag early. We have the Hajar that works pretty well with wipes. We can use the Hajar to give our mole indestructible and then wipe the field. We'll see. And they can tap for... Oh, fantastic. Heartless Act. Because why not, you know? Oh, well. We've got the Wrath. Take him out. Glad to get rid of that Sanctum Weaver. That is a stupidly powerful ramp spell in this deck. I mean, at that point, it tapped for three. So. Kind of annoying to have Field of Ruin, because it means they can actually get rid of our Utopia. Oh, uh, this is annoying. Let's try this again. So they're going to create spirits for each shrine. Oh, jeez. Oh my goodness. Okay, more shrines. Let's take care of the Goshen Tai. Now this is interesting. Trample has been has arrived. The trample has arrived. 9-4 trample, here we go. Sweet. Down to 14. And we have Tamiya safekeeping. Come on. Let's do this, guys. So even though they've got all this stuff. Maybe we can get through together. But they have six mana now. Six mana. Very Jeskai mana they have there. In fact, it's all Jeskai. Considering that it's a five color deck, kind of strange. No black. Okay, so this is the one that lets them draw. Tacking in. Interesting. Okay. Draw a card. Gives our guy indestructible if we need to as well. Swing in. What are they waiting for? Down to three. Okay. Jeez, that is a lot of blockers. So here's my thoughts. Next turn, they're probably going to chomp with everything. But if we give our thing indestructible, should be fine for a secondary attack. And we have trample. So they're going to need to block with six things, which they do have. I oh, know seven, actually. Yeah. I really don't want them to use any removal here. Exile target mana permanent and permanent controls. Okay. What's it going to be? Well, I have to kind of do that here, don't I? Okay. So actually, this kind of works out pretty well because now Hajar can give him indestructible as well. Yeah, fantastic. Jeez, that was scary. That deck is so crazy. I'm going to quickly interrupt this video to tell you this video is not sponsored. And because of that, the channel does need help from people like you. So if you do want to support the channel in your own way, you can like and subscribe, which is completely free. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can donate to the channel via my Ko-fi link below or become a channel patron. And if you become a channel patron, you can get a custom video of your choice. Check out the details below. Okay, let's keep it. We have an Atraxa enemy, but we have Atraxa's fall solution. So we have the solution. Let's keep the hand. And we leave too early for that, I'm afraid. I wonder what version this is gonna be. Planeswalkers, perhaps? You know what, I've been recording so much today and I just feel like I'm not getting anywhere. It's hard. This deck is just giving me so many ridiculous opponents. And it there was a shift. It started off okay, but then it suddenly kind of became ridiculous. The opponents just grew in power as time went on. It's almost like I guess because at the time of recording it's Saturday. Saturday night. What is it? It's midnight. Why am I 
playing this so long. I think I played this for two hours. Kind of annoying. Some some nights I would just record and record and record and not get anything done. What the hell? That's a very early Braska. Treasure. Jeez. Uh, hmm. That is a that is very annoying. Five mana. Let's just go for escape. We need some answers here. Okay, frostbite. There we go. We got the answer. That's cool. But yeah, my goodness, so many tough opponents on a Saturday. I don't know why why it is. I feel like. A lot of the casual people are being kicked out of arena. Makes me really sad. Makes me really sad. The other thing that makes me really sad is the fact that we're not going to be able to use all these spells in exile. The Jani. <laughs> oh no. There is a place for all of you. Sunfall on top. Although he only has how much? Five loyalty, we can use the blast to kill it. Or would it be better to go glory bringer here? Yeah, then we can kill the cobra as well. And weaken Ajani. It's probably better. It's one and nine tenths of birds with one one stone. Which doesn't sound as catchy, does it? One and nine tenths birds with one stone. Yeah. Get lost. My goodness, how many variants have they got in their deck? This is crazy. This is this example of someone that really loves a Traxxer. My God. There's a lot of money gone into this. A lot of money. Liferate. Okay. They've got two mana up. Bit sus. Hmm. Let's try and go for Anzrag, see what they do. No? Okay. Oh, fair enough. Where did Sunfall go? Oh no, is that in the hand? Did we just do a boo-boo here? Oh my god! Every it's just... More loads of course. board wipes. Oh yeah, it really is just loads of board wipes. Okay, three, four, five, six. If Rep Ring goes off, we're doomed, I think. Oh well. Um, let's try Zena Ghost then. Quite funny that we're just gonna give the halfling some power boost here. But you know what? If it does if it does the job. You cannot Jeez, Rep Rings. How many does it need? Eight. Mox Amber. Tracks her again. Plus three plus three. Blightwing Welp. Oh no, that's got infect. Hmm. How am I gonna deal with this stuff? Not really sure. Not really sure. The trample probably quite good. Yeah, that probably works out. Let's embarrass them by killing the Ajani with a, uh, a halfling. Trample, lol. 8 9 halfling. Okay. Now I'm glad that's gone. So, depending on what happens next, we could have Xenagos come online pretty soon because we've got triple green here. But, I mean, their deck is just filled with removal. That's well, ridiculous. Dig up. Oh my god, they've got so much mana as well. Why are we facing this deck? Ugh. This is basically Demonic 2, guys. And they've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, you know, anything. Game winning. This is game ending, probably. Ultimatum. Casualties. Omniscience. 
well offering. Really? Metal is eternal. Fair enough. Six. Was that the card? I mean, I don't know if that was a card they they searched, but I guess. Um. Yeah. Surely that wasn't. Surely they had better cards than the, than the Val offering. Okay, proliferate. Vraska's gonna kill us so soon. Rampishing Raptor. Trample haste. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool actually. They do have an extra card in their hand, so God knows what other what that is. Brotherhood's N. Oh, Oh, wow. Oh, I can't use it. I would actually use this to destroy all their mana. That would have been so sick. Oh, well. I mean, I don't know if we're going to be able to survive, but... So... Whenever deals common damage to an opponent, deals that much damage to each target planeswalker. Okay. I guess we'll just... Swing in here. Yeah, I mean, we tried our best. Four, five, six, seven, death touch. Okay. They can turn off all of our, any of our creatures as well. They could turn our Xenogos into a treasure. That kind of sucks. Oh, I get, at least we get to kill their things. You know? Get to pump as well. That's pretty sick. Oh, I should have done that before the Xenogos, to be honest. Hmm, we just wiped out all their stuff. Kind of interesting. All damage to Vraska. I mean, next turn we definitely want to go for the Brotherhood's End. Destroy all of I mean, it gets rid of literally all of their rocks, which means it's going to be very tough for them to come back. Zenogos being a treasure does suck, though, I have to say. I have to say. Oh, come on, man. Each creature in each planeswalker. If they use the minus, then it's probably better to just kill all their kill each of their planeswalkers, right? Oh, gross, gross. Um, yeah, getting rid of this is really, really does hurt to be to be honest. Okay, let's go for Anne's rag. Draw some cards. What are we gonna get? Ooh. Interesting. I think we need to kill some creatures and planeswalkers here. <clears throat> I am always lurking in the shadows. It's a shame we can't actually do this now. Because we can't attack. They can return a permanent from the graver to the hand. That that really sucks. Man, they're just hanging on by a thread. They could return the Vraska back again, but they would... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We're just struggling. Because we shouldn't really be facing this deck. Nature has not abandoned me. Did they get back a lot? Oh, it only gets back a lot. Oh, from the permanence they milled. Oh, I see. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, I guess we equip... We'll try and kill that, because that is annoying. Oh, they don't care. Fair enough. I do wish we had some more creatures. We just need... We just need a couple creatures to draw some extra spells, guys. That's all we need. Whilst they're playing all their good stuff. Their lifelink is pretty annoying. I suppose they don't really have much themselves, but they are just gaining loads and loads. My turn. Old Span Dragon. That's nice. You get to draw two cards. Okay. This could change the sway of things. Please not. 
just lands. Ancient Grudge, okay, I mean, sure. Oh, they're actually going to block. Okay. Let's start taking care of the few of the rocks, I guess. Eight. They've got so much mana. And all they need is one huge spell, and they can probably just win straight up, right? The lifelink on the Atraxo is annoying. These rocks are annoying. Sunfall. Exile all creatures. Um. Yeah. Not much we can do about that, sadly. Do we go into the command zone? Yeah. Hmm. Well, at least we don't have that much. All right, let's kill this before this gets too big. <laughs> that incubator token. Funnily enough. I don't want that to get too big and then it will suddenly just start killing us with massive tokens. Target. Come on, we need more creatures. Look, at least we don't have poison, right? Ooh, Ronus. <clears throat> we probably want to save this on a turn when we can actually attack with haste or deals and no. Oh, Shadow Spear. That's good. Yeah, we don't want to reveal the Shadow Spear yet either. Storm's Wrath. Oh, that will kill Anzrag. So yeah, let's not do that. Unless we get absolutely desperate, I suppose. Okay, let's see what the top deck. Please just be nothing. <laughs> Please be nothing. I suppose if it's a walker, we... No way did we win that. No way. Unbelievable. We were doing so bad in the middle. Look at all this removal, the Vraska and stuff. I don't even know what the turning point was. I guess when I killed their infectors, because they would I think they they would have got us with the infect. I'm actually kind of surprised. I guess it was the Guardian Project and the Tribute. Um but yeah, I'm very surprised they quit. I could have at least traded with this, but I suppose when they do, we draw we draw two cards each time. Wow, I really did not expect that. I have to say, on paper, this looks really good. In practice, the opponents you face make it not as fun as you'd hoped. It is. I, st I still think this this list I've made is incredible. I I can't really fault the list. It's not the list's fault. But yeah, when you're just facing some really tough opponents, I mean, I was facing um, Prismatic Bridge, Essica, Attractors, all sorts of stuff. When it has a chance to breathe for just a couple of minutes, obviously you can do some crazy stuff. Team of Battle Rage, you know, all the double strike stuff pending. And like I said in the intro, all the card advantage stuff like Rishkar's Expertise and Hunter's Insight are really good. Issue is when you play any spells, your opponent's got to go, nope, let's kill the Anzrag, and then you you down a you commander. It's it's deceptive. It looks so awesome. And look at all these words, but at the end of the day, it's kind of French vanilla. So if you don't know, vanilla creature has no abilities. French vanilla has like a keyword ability. And then this is, I mean, this has text. This has text, but it doesn't do anything when it comes in. And that's that's the critical issue of 1v1. If the card comes in, doesn't do anything, it feels not so great, right? Just look at look at some of the best cards we have at four mana. Halana and Elena puts counts on things that turn. Questing Beast attacks that turn. Then it goes five mana, but it makes something huge that turn. You get the, you get the point. They, they need to do stuff as soon as they come in. Or it's, just, it's just tough. I still love it. You just need to protect it as much as possible. Um, but yeah, there's not too much to say. I think when it was spoiled, people are like, oh my God, it's so good. But because power creep and because how removal is so good now, it's weirdly balanced. I have to say it's, it's well designed. You could, in theory, put any number on this. It could be a 10, it could be a 10, four, probably could be a 12, four, and it would still die to so much removal. It could be blocked. It doesn't have trample. So yeah, there's definitely, it, 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 it reads better than it is. The fact that it has to survive an attack is very bad. The fact that people play a lot of one ones with just for chumping, it's not good. Um, the fact that when it attacks again on the second attack step, 
it's taken damage from the first, so don't forget that. It will have damage marked on it. So your opponent blocks with something else, it could kill it. There's a lot of factors involved. But yeah, nicely balanced, has a few hoops to jump through, and I can see why people like it. It's, it's a giant mole. It's pretty. It's, it's cool. It's fun. It's cool. You just have to get the right opponents. It's a weird place to be. I love the deck. I want to use it in paper. I'd love to try it in paper. That's probably a better litmus test. But yeah, if you want to give it a go yourself, sorry. If you want to give it a go yourself, the deck list will be in the description below as per usual. And if you'd like to support the channel, like, subscribe, become a patron, get your own custom video. What more can I say apart from that? Um, and yeah, you should probably watch another one of my videos to support the channel. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.